Hello, and welcome again to another episode of How to Avoid Murder and Other Awkward Situations. I am your host, Dave, and with me always is the lovely Laura. And tonight, we're going to discuss something gruesome and something horrible. We may laugh, we may make some jokes, we use gallows humor here. It's not for the faint of heart, you may be offended. And if you're a delicate boy that plays the drums in an alt-rock band from Chicago, you will be offended. And you probably should listen to something else, something that decent folks listen to. I wouldn't know, because I'm not listening to it. And so, without further ado, let's proceed. Welcome again to How to Avoid Murder and Other Awkward Situations. I am one of your hosts, Dave, with my partner in crime, Laura, here. And tonight's kind of unique because I have no idea what she's going to talk about. Because I literally changed my mind an hour ago. I was <laughs> all set to talk about Stephen Grant, who I do want to talk about someday. But I was on, um, I was on the internet and I, somebody else mentioned... Lacey Spears, who I did not know, so I immediately Googled her. It's like what I do 15 times a day. Lacey Spears. Is I Google some name that someone mentions on a true crime Facebook page, and then I find out about some. There's really a lot of murderers out there. Because I was like, who is this person? I've never heard of them. How could I have missed this horrible thing? It's like, it's oh, like... because there's shit tons of murders, and they just happen constantly. So this is an amazing story, and... I, maybe I'm the only one who missed this story, but this is a, a like a mommy blogger. Oh, God, this is the best. Okay, it's terrible. It's not. Yeah, it's I, not the best, but it's it's blogger. fucking amazing because <laughs> this, is this Lacey Spears was um, a single mom and a nursing student, I think, at one point, and she spent a lot of time with her adorable son, whose name was Garnet. And let's back up here. And Garnet. Yeah, it was Gar. I know. Terrible, is- terrible fucking name. There's, I'll, there's more about his name later. I'll mention. So, was she, anyways, was she dating a graphic designer who worked at home? Well, I'm gonna get to his dad in a minute. The dad definitely didn't to- work that much. Okay, I don't know. On. Well, whatever. Probably not. He didn't like the name, but anyway. So, anyways, Lacey Spears, um, in whatever two, let's see, two thousand. All right, I I really just found out about this. This is on not the fly. Very, this, this is, is live <laughs> podcasting yeah, or the I equivalent thereof. Did that. not know. Okay, I just got to get the date of it. I mean, okay, so in 2014, um, let's say let's back up to 2013. 2013, Lacey Spears was this like single mom with this five year old son, Garnet. They lived on this sort of kind of. It sounds like kind of a commune. It was um, not really a commune, but like we have one actually in our town. That's kind. Of, it's like a community. Like they they live. They all kind of like work together and they have like communal meals and they help each other out. And it's all like Rudolf Steiner and all the kids go to the little Waldorf school on the property and the they're centered around those elders and the community. And everything is called the Fellowship Community. Where, Anyways, where is that near us? Is it, no, no. Well, I'll tell you. No. Later, where the one near us is. It's not quite that weird. But anyways, it doesn't seem like it's really a cult, but it's a little bit weird. But anyway, she was living there with her son, Garnet, and um, blogging and Facebooking and Twittering, or tweeting, sorry, and even had a MySpace page, and she was talking constantly about her son, Garnet. Was it called Darnet Garnet? Nope. It was called Garnet's, Garnet's Journey. <laughs> and oh my God. How many times are we going to say the word Garnet in this podcast? A lot. <laughs> Get used to it. So, uh, it's not the destination, Laura. Let it's me the uh, read you some of her. Can I just read you a little blurb from her blog? I, oh, and I, let me just I, add in that do. not only was she a mommy blogger, but she was a really shitty writer. Then a lot of grammatical and spelling errors. I'm going to insist you use okay, proper so voice. Let me read. Let me read. This was a blog post from 2012, September 18th, 2012. She only had two entries in her blog but she had like 10 billion facebook posts a thousand tweets okay so this was her i'm just not i'm not gonna read the whole thing here's a few pictures from our last year of our from the last year of our life we've done our unthinkable we have together survived our survived nearly 365 days a complete year without blake my soulmate and garnet's daddy it hasn't been easy or even remotely enjoyable. The past year has been the hardest year of my life. I don't imagine the next will be easy, but worth living through. And then she like details each month 
Oh my what God. they did, yeah, with pictures and just it's just all about Garnet. Though I don't know what happened. Like, to her. I'll I, just give you a here. God, I hope she dies. The enti- here's January. January, the entire month, Garnet dressed as superhero, super superhero, and we got a new friend, Odie, which is a dog, obviously. Nah. From the moment Garnet laid eyes on Oe, she puts in quotes, he was in love. They were inseparable. <laughs> oh, you have a bad name too, Ruff Ruff. Oh God, I know, and. And da- and oh, and she so she talks about uh, March. We made a fourteen-hour drive home to attend a memorial service for Daddy Blake. While there, we enjoyed some revisiting our some wait, time revisiting wait. our home. Daddy Blake, friends, who died? That's oh, that's, that's what she's saying. Oh. The, his dad. His, his dad. dad died. Okay. Uh, April. This may have been the first month that I can recall events that occurred without looking at pictures or videos. April was filled with many doctor visits for Garnet. Long waits on Mama's end, and Garnet mastered his balance bike. I mean, she's just like completely, just chronicles everything. By the way, this is just a side note, but this little boy had a girl haircut, and I'm totally fine with people having whatever haircut they want for their boys. It's fine to have long hair, but she cut his bangs, like blunt cut them across the front, and then like cut the rest of it into a page boy. It was like a Prince Valiant kind of haircut. Well, not a good... Remember Prince Valium? Prince Valium? Yes, I do. Much better. I don't know. I just... I'm like, oh, man, this poor boy is probably being called a girl all the time. Um, For example, here's a picture. I know. So, anyway... You can see my face. It's been distorted and what the fuck... She looked alarmed. Oh, she just... Everything, you know. Um, uh, August was an ugly month. Real quick, I'm trying to guess what's happening here. At first, I thought Garrett wasn't real and the whole thing was made up. Oh, that would have been a good, like, Virginia Woolf kind of twist. I I did see a picture of this little... August was an ugly month. We spent more time away from home than we did home. I believe we were both thankful to see August end. Oh, we journeyed upward. Oh. Dog died, too? The dog died. I didn't even notice that until now. Garnet discovered the art of dress-up. We spent many... We spent several nights at the pier and many mornings playing with street paint. Whatever the fuck that is. I don't even know. Okay, so I won't read I won't read dead, all dead, of them. Dead dog. Rough yeah, year. Yeah, seriously. So you're like, oh. And mom dresses me like a girl. Okay. And my best friend's name was Odie, based on a crappy comic strip. And he's mm-hmm. dead. And so we must... So... Let me guess. They go see. to Indiana and they tie up John Arbuckle, oh, creator wanna... of Garfield, and they make him recreate Odie. Nope. Uh, um, damn, damn, I had one that had like all a whole bunch of her Facebook posts. Okay, so anyways, um, let me just hold on. So, so she was, you know, I mean, at, we all know, we all know these moms, right? Um, well, there's different levels of moms that we. We know. all know the mom that posts incessantly about their darling little, you know. Nobody likes your kids. Children. Moms. I mean, nobody. Wants I post to see about my kids. kids, but I always try to make sure it's slightly self-deprecating, because otherwise, everyone's like, Ugh, you know, and nobody wants to read about all the Pinteresty things that you did and all the wonderful things that your child did. Uh, well, so anyway, so this woman. For the record, our kids don't do anything remotely wonderful. They're borderline. Yeah. You know, foster kids at this point. Mm-hmm. So, anyways. Um, God damn it, I can't find the Facebook thing anymore. So anyways, but she she posted just uh, all this stuff. She posted her Twitter. is like amazing. Hold on, let me see if I can find the Twitter. Okay, but yeah, it's none of this sounds that amazing right now. This sounds like just Okay, another... here we go. Here's some... Uh, oh, no, wait. That's not it. All right. I'm right. I'm probably... I'm being boring now. Okay. Put your so, shirt back on. It just got way more interesting. <laughs> so anyways, so I'm just trying to paint the picture of this woman... She's, she's got a million Facebook friends. She's posting incessantly. She, her whole life seems to revolve around her son. Well, Blake's dead. Dog's dead. Yeah. she appear, the, Apparently the dad died. Not a lot of detail about that on the Facebook or anything kind, else. Kind of burying the lead there. Um, but, Our dad died, but look at these lovely paintings. But the other thing that was going on was that Garrett was a sickly child. And in fact, in his first year of life, he was in the hospital over 23 times. Hmm. And she, and in her chronicling of his life, she also chronicled his mysterious medical issues. He had a lot of issues. He had digestive issues. He had just all, he had um, like seizure like activity, chronic ear infections, just all kinds of shit. He was just a, a sickly kid and he just had a terrible, terrible time. And, and eventually, 
uh, he had to have a G tube put in, which is a tube that they, they surgically put into your stomach, directly into your stomach, so you can feed someone with like a feeding bag. I thought the G tube was a myth, at least the male mm, G tube. No. Oh. You're getting, I'll, I'll explain that to you later. Hmm. Um, anyway, so yeah, he had, a, he had a feeding tube, which is pretty drastic, but apparently like he didn't, he didn't always eat and they were having trouble getting nutrition into him. So he had this feeding tube. She was posting all the time about so their bad? life. They, they joined this, this, this group, this kind of supportive community that she was, you know, the single mom, it, the whole point of the community is to, like help your neighbors and everything. I so, honest, the feeding tube sounds kind of appealing to me. It's I like the word feeding. I like the I, you I know like, what? I like no all tubes. It's terrible because name, you know, name a tube you haven't liked. I like inner Do you tube. know why it's I not? Like tube do you know why it's not um, good? Because you don't get to taste the food. Oh, well, that could be good. No. Mm-mm. Just saying. Name, You're gonna name, just eat through? No, believe I'm me. Saying it's, uh, a, it's, a very, I'm actually, it's, it's an appealing name. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Name, name, name a bad yeah, tube. Feeding tube. It's not feed a feeding. Me. It's not a feed bag, Dave. <laughs> well, it's a well, feeding tube. I'm saying. Have you ever been? Has there been a tube you didn't like? So let me just, yeah, I have, but yeah, that's no. a different story. So anyway, <laughs> Lacey Spears on uh, January 2020, 20, let's see here, about January 20th, she posts on Facebook that he's been admitted to the hospital. And this was not anything new because he was admitted to the hospital a lot, constantly, pretty much along with photos of him in the hospital and, so and by, by, by her own account and many other people that knew her, she was this like incredibly devoted, extremely caring, just her world revolved around her son. She so was she's... a caretaker and having a feeding tube is no joke. You got to make sure that that port is clean and everything. It's just, it's a huge amount of work. I would not keep my feeding tube clean. We God, know that. I hope to God you never need a feeding tube. I hope to God you never I'll have to taking clean care it. of me if I remember Jesus really ill. I'm a, I will hire help. <laughs> you will kill me. Mm, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> Resuscitate. So, I'm thinking right here. I want to be resuscitated. Do not <laughs> do not let her kill me. Oh, he really, you know, he said it, he didn't want to be too much trouble. And, I'm going to no, be a huge pain I know in you the do. ass you do, you in this life trouble. and the next. Okay, so can I get back to, <laughs> yeah, all right. please. On January 20th, she wrote that he'd been admitted to the hospital. And at about 3 p.m. that day, she said that he had had a dangerously high sodium level, which can happen when you are dehydrated. French fries. Uh-huh. Yeah, funny story. So she, she posted that it had dropped to a more normal range of 165, which is frankly quite a bit higher than the normal range, which is supposed to be between about 135 and 145 um, milliequivalents per liter, this says. That doesn't sound right to me. But anyway, 155 or higher is considered life-threatening. So anyways, this was high. So she wrote that he was... Quote, very sleepy, but alert and responding, end quote, in the pediatric intensive care. This is in New York, in Valhalla Medical Center. It's a cool name for a medical center. Actually, it's isn't Valhalla, wasn't Valhalla like heaven for the, for the, hmm? wasn't Valhalla like the Vikings heaven? That seems like a poor choice of a name for a medical center, actually. <laughs> it's like heaven, it's like well, spirit no. airline. Like, no, 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 no. Anyway, so... Um, she had posted five times that day. And in a month that started with her posting pictures of her son happy and healthy and playing and normal. Okay, so he got sick very fast, it seemed like. If you die at a Viking hospital, is the, do you think they dispose of you like a typical Viking funeral? Like they just shoot arrows into you that are burning? I don't know. Put you on a burning boat. I drift away. So he had had, so in that month, he'd already been in the hospital uh, once for the flu and uh, had had a seizure. And they were waiting for a neurologist visit. But anyways, he was back Caesar? in the hospital. He had super high sodium levels. Um, then they... Oh, then she... Yeah, too many happy meals. She posted... Yes, close. Then she posted a picture of, of Garnet with wires attached to his head for a, a brain scan and said, please, please send G some love. This is all on Facebook, by the way. Please, please send G some love. Went from fine to really sick in minutes. Pray for Garrett, she wrote in another post. She was posting constantly. He's on life support and being life flighted. So things got really oh, yeah. terrible again, really fast. I know two or three people who have very sick kids. I'm just, let me just okay. interject here. Who I am not annoyed by their posts. Me because, neither. Because, and so this is just, it's tragic. And she's getting all the yeah. sympathy on Facebook and people are horrified and, and their hearts are breaking for her. I really don't think people are, the people that I'm thinking of, and I can think of three people in particular, aren't trying to listen sympathy in the posts. No. They're giving people updates, and I, I mean, I, I, yeah. So I don't want to. No, no. This is uh, so far. 
this seems like an acceptable level of... Uh, this is a nightmare, right? And people were, you know, yeah. the, her Facebook friends and her Twitter followers were pouring out, uh, outpouring of sympathy. So things took an absolute horrific turn on January 22nd, and she posted, My sweet baby Garnet has been declared brain dead. It can't even be possible. That's my baby boy. I'm not ready to let him go. I feel like I'm about or none of things like jokes about here since I'm not from this story at all. So So anyway. Poor Garrett. Really sad. And Blake. Horrible. And horrible. Dirty. And she had by the way, before that, before he became brain dead, she posted he'd been in terrible pain, screaming in pain. His screaming that his head hurt. They had laid his bed flat, but they just they could not figure out what the fuck was going on. They just couldn't figure it out. On January twenty first she wrote that he stopped breathing and it was on a ventilator January 22nd and she said he was well, yeah. brain dead. This was 2015. Okay. Recent. Thanks, Obama. Then on January 23rd, her final post from the hospital said, Garnet the Great journeyed onward today at 1020 a.m. Very Viking-esque. So he passed away at Valhalla Hospital on January 23rd and absolutely tragic. He was five. He was this sweet, happy little boy who had been in and out of the hospital much of his life with a sort of nebulous set of issues that didn't really have a label, didn't really have a syndrome that could be identified. Um, but anyways, here's this mother. She's lost her son. She it's her smother? only child. Huh? Did you say smother? Mother? This mother. Okay. This mother who had lost her child. Tragic. And her husband and her dog. Apparently. Yeah. However. Oh, there's more? I thought, oh, I thought we were just there's our, more. Our annual, it's not just this a kid poor, tragic, podcast. dead child. Yeah, I thought you were just trying to get me really, really depressed. No. So I normally hate reading things about things happening to kids because it freaks me out and I don't like to read about it. But this what, is so not, fascinating. No, it's weird. It always gives me like a massive erection. Is oh, that normal? Dave. Sorry. Stop it. Okay. It's totally kidding. Um, only, only dead kids, not live oh, kids. Oh, Dave, stop! Too far, too far. <laughs> right. All right. Anyway, uh. unbeknownst to Lacey Spears, a criminal investigation was already underway. Good. And they were looking at her because the well, sodium levels in her son's system were so high that there, were, the doctor, one of the doctors said there was no metabolic. There, there's, there's no metabolic possibility that his own body could have gotten his sodium levels up that high. Interesting. So, police had so while she's posting online that her son died, police had completed a search of her property. They had interviewed other people that lived in this place, this community, um, neighbors and friends of hers, asking about her relationship with her son. And they were awaiting toxicology test results. Interestingly, as part of this investigation, one of the neighbors came forward and said that Lacey Spears had called her at home while he was in the hospital. Like, why didn't you just tweet? And asked her to take a feeding bag, which is, Ooh. if you're following along, the bag that connects to the feeding tube. A feed bag and a feed tube? Taking it I'm sold. out of her home and getting rid of it. Just so, the feeding bag? Mm-hmm. Um, it's an odd request. Oh. Hours before he was rushed to the hospital. Oh, my God. That No, no. Days before he went to the hospital, Garnet, one of the, one of the neighbors said, um, walked by and said, don't leave me. She said his speech was slurry, he was thirsty, and he wanted to go home. He then also said to the woman, you promise you're going to come to my house and get me. She said later she didn't really know what that meant. He was seemed out of it, basically. By the way, that was the same neighbor that was called later and asked to remove the feeding bag. Remove it from where? From her house. I mean... To go into Lacey's house, get this feeding bag, and get it out of to there. To what purpose was this well, done? Hmm. I, no, I'm saying, like, how do you tell... How do you going... say that to... to what, what did the neighbor say? Why? I don't know. I don't know. Like... So I, here's this mother. So imagine you're these neighbors. Here's this mother who's by all 
you know, counts looks looks really caring. She has a sick, chronically sick child. She's taking care of him. She's she's posting, you know, constant updates from the hospital, asking for prayers. You know, same, it's same it's prayer. tragic. And then yeah, and then she calls you and says, "I we're in the hospital. Could you just get this feeding bag? That's you know, it's in the blah blah blah. And you just get it out. It just take it to your house." I mean, what, are you going to question her right then? Oh, yes. I mean, your mind it's hopefully a... went red flag. And it must have gone red flag Feral because cats, when the police cats. came yeah. and interviewed people, she said, actually. And she, I think, did have the feeling. I don't think she had, like, disposed of it. I think she had it. I'm trying to find that right now. Um, at one point, so there was a camera in the, in the hospital room mm-hmm. that he was in. But there was no camera in the bathroom. Is she a nurse? You said? She was a nursing student at one point. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You can see where this is going, well, right? What did she do for a living? It's unclear. It doesn't seem like she... I don't think she was really working a lot. I think she's working on the, in this community. I mean, I think this was like this sort of... I just want to tell you. I'm just trying I, to find more information about this community, but it's some, sort of, some sort of religious, some sort of Christian... Group. Oh, I missed that whole part. Oh, she's like in some cult. No, thing. no. I mean, eh, I don't know if it was a cult, but it was like a community, like a... I'll read you their page. It's interesting. It sounds like it sort of was like a little commune. Like they all okay. kind of worked together. They had gardens and farms. So, so on the and... left, if it's if Branch Davidians on the left and Amway's on the right, <laughs> how, well, where in the middle is she? Is Amway all the way on the right? I think. I okay. Know. Okay. Amway. I... I, how about put like if Amway's at a seven. regular church on the right and put <laughs> <All> the <laughs> Branch Davidian cult on the left. I think this place is probably like three quarters of the way towards a regular church, but like a little hint of cultiness. A little, but, co- little Qureshi. Right. Why was I even talking about that, though? Anyway, so that, oh, oh, what did she do for a living? I think she just worked on this place. I think, mm. I don't know. It doesn't, didn't really say. It just said she was a nursing student at one point. I just want to, I have so little respect for students that are, you know, just get your degree. I hate students. Well, she was only 21 when her son was born, first mm-hmm. of all. Yeah, not my problem. All right. Anyways, so a um, a criminal investigation led to um, the fact that she that his sodium, the concentration of sodium in his feeding bag, and the concentration of sodium in his blood were extraordinarily high. And there was also video footage of her and him in the hospital room, and he appeared pretty. Okay, and then she took him into the bathroom and took him back out. And there's no video in the bathroom, of course. Why and you she say of course? That's, back... that's the first place I have video cameras. Well, I don't think that's illegal, isn't it? Well, you tell me. I mean, I, I have so many tapes of you peeing. Ew. So anyway, they. So she brings him back out of the bathroom. Like a few minutes later, he is like, he takes like a nose dive. GHP. So. It's looking bad for her, but it, so they did, they, they ended up, they ended up charging her, but it was interesting because they didn't have a whole lot of, a lot of it was circumstantial. So then they started sort of, here's this mom who. It's always circumstantial. Well, that is what this one article said. Like they they didn't really have any hard evidence. also. But so here's the interesting thing. Matlock killed everyone's idea of evidence. It's always circumstantial evidence. 99 times. That's why they have a trial. If you have real, if you have hard evidence, no trial. You're fucking guilty. It's true. There you go. So, they started interviewing people that this woman knew and had known for... They went back far. They went back to her friends in high school, her childhood friends. She was from Kentucky. Um, They interviewed her friends. They interviewed her family members, interviewed her neighbors. And they started to find weird things in her past. Like a dead husband and a dead dog? Well, funny you should mention that. I'm going to get to them in just a second. Oh, God. So, first of all, um, going back to high school, there... There was a friend of hers who was interviewed as part of this criminal investigation who... Um, she was mid-20s, right? Was she happened? was like 20... She's, yeah, she's not even 30 now. I love bad nurses. Um, she wasn't even a nurse. So anyways, she... This woman who was her friend in like middle school said... her This woman's mother later told her that, that this girl Lacey had told the mother who she was... Apparently this... So Lacey was friends with this, this girl Jessica and became very kind of clingy with her family was over there all the time called jessica's mom mom loved their family it was like you know one of those kinds of kids who just couldn't get rid of them um but they were good friends and at one point she told jessica's mom that she was being abused at home and the mom called you know child protective services and it was all kind of weird and you know 
terrible, but nothing really came of it. Well, then this, this woman, Jessica stopped being friends with her in high school, but then said later that they, she heard like she was, that she had um, anorexia in high school. She claimed to have been sexually abused in high, by family members and like all these things. And it turned out when they started interviewing her friends, that there were a lot of inconsistent stories that she'd been telling people over the years. She claimed she was, anorexic and then it turned out she really wasn't she claimed that she was abused and then nothing ever it didn't really seem to be true she, she likes, then likes also attention. she also yes yeah, she likes attention she also babysat a couple different kids one in high school and then one after high school who she posted pictures of herself with um on myspace and claimed to be their mother and in a couple of those cases the moms found out and were creeped out understandably and kind of cut ties with her and didn't let her babysit anymore but that's very strange there was one boy she was babysitting him a lot and she was posting stuff on facebook i think his name was jonathan and and calling him her son and pretending that this was her kid so then she went at age 21 and had her own child which was with then like a perfect um you know, reason to get a lot of attention. Well, the interesting thing about Blake is that nobody seemed to ever have met him or know him or remember him or even be able to figure out who the fuck he was. Because when she was 21 and she got pregnant, she was actually living um, in an apartment above this guy whose name was Chris something. Let's see if I can find it. Um... And so she, she kind of gets this guy's her neighbor, Chris Hill. They get to be friends, and then they get to be friends with benefits. And so they're kind of hooking up for a while, and she gets pregnant. So he says that she, they talked about, they weren't really even dating. They were just kind of ha- casually hooking up, and she got yeah. pregnant. So then they kind of started talking about getting married and stuff because they figure they're going to be, you know, linked together anyways. And they t- this is when um, she- he said that she wanted the name Garrett. And he was like, oh, no, let's keep talking about names. Uh, not a fan of that name. But um, she, all of a sudden, he said she did a 180. She said, all of a sudden, she said, it's not yours. It's not your baby. Before the baby was born, she claimed it wasn't his. She didn't want anything to do with him. She completely stopped speaking to him. Um, she, you know, wouldn't wouldn't have anything to do with him. This is not... This is- this sounds very typical so far. I yeah. Mean, so weirdly enough, though, she had the baby. She was still living, I think, one floor above him. So he would see her with this baby, who at one point he thought was his. Well, he wasn't wasn't really sure. It's like very weird, dead, right? Doesn't sound I like this. Doesn't sound like this. Chris Hill really pursued it all that much. But um, wise, move. wise move. She said that, or he says that she kind of told him. You know, no, you can't have anything to do with this baby. It's not yours. And he couldn't really do anything about it. So you got a crazy bitch. And then she started saying that the baby was the child of this guy, Blake. So... Was Blake a drifter? Blake, she claimed, was her soulmate. Ooh, nice. And Garrett's... Garnet. Garnet. I want to call him Garrett because it's a more normal name. Garnet's dad. Soulmate and Garnet's daddy. Um, and over the next few years, after Garnet was born, oh. she would tell her friends about that this was her this was her soulmate, Garnet's daddy, this guy Blake, who was a police officer who <gasps> died in a car accident. Based on what we know so far about Lacey, uh-huh. what kind of tattoos do you think Blake had in his imaginary body? I think he didn't have any tattoos. No, he's a police officer. No, no. Probably has a military background at this point. Come Maybe. On. Everyone under 30 has tattoos at this point. I don't know. Well, Lacey was, I mean. You gotta, I mean, I, maybe a wolf. I don't probably like a maybe, a wolf, maybe huh? a wolf tearing out of his skin. Definitely had no. That's too trashy. Definitely had Garrett's name tattooed on his yes. body somewhere. There you go. Yeah, that that's it. And Lacey's and Lacey's and Lacey's. Maybe okay. Bird. Yes. So, okay. anyways, in her mind, yeah, she actually lost a few friends or quite a few friends on um, Facebook. And one of her friends, this woman named Riley, says. Blake was never in any pictures when Garnet was born, but she was crying about him on Facebook posts, saying he was the love of her life, that he was always there for her. That's when I stopped Facebooking with her. I was just done with her after that, after realizing that most of the stuff she was saying just wasn't true. So there were a lot of things like that where she was just making shit up. She was, you know, 
she made up Blake. God knows what the fuck happened to that dog. There's nowhere anywhere that I can find that says anything else about that dog. So who knows? Did they have a dog? Was it their friend's dog? And she was pretending that she gave her son a dog. It's not clear. I will look into that more later. But um, yeah, Blake was totally invented, it seems like. She was a woman who, since she was a teenager, was inventing stories to get attention. Okay. She told her friend's mom that she had been, you know, abused. She told another friend, she had another friend whose mom was like driving her to practices or something and, and started calling that woman mom, which that woman said made her really like uncomfortable. Irritating person. Doesn't she? And and what told that, that woman that she was suffering from anorexia. So she, uh, she did a long. Mrs. 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 Bluson, I was abused. No, and... mom. She was calling all the, her friends' moms mom, it okay. sounds like. Hey, mom. Hey, Stacy's mom. I I cannot eat the food that you are offering me because my uncle touched me. I don't think that's how Lacey talked. It's not how I imagine her talking. I feel you're sounding like I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I want, I want so, to go Let me get to... back to... Let me get back to wait. Let me get back to the whole Chris and Blake thing because after Garnet died, every time I eat, I feel him inside me again. Okay, sorry. Go on. Don't make fun of. Let's not make fun of eating disorders and uh, and sexual abuse in the, the, the same if, if, lame joke. If you make joke. fun of the same time, it kind of can't, it, it cancels kinda, itself yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. it becomes it, tasteful. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> I like didn't that. know that rule. Two negatives equal positive. Uh huh. So the funny thing is uh, not really funny, not funny, haha, so much, but the odd thing about the mystery man, Blake, her soulmate, who nobody had ever, ever fucking even seen a picture of, um, is that after Garnet died, she started texting with Chris Hill and referring to Garnet as our son and saying things like, Chris, you know we'll always be part of each other's lives for the rest of our time here. We have a son together. We may not have worked out, but now we both need each other, friends at the very least. So she was posting him all kinds of dramatic things. Uh, she she texted, She was. I mean, she was texting to him. Uh, she said, I know they're looking at me. I would never hurt my baby. Um, and then he texted her at one point saying, um, the police are looking at you for poisoning Garnet with salt. And she How says, you- what does this mean? Just in disbelief. Which just sounds like an asshole thing to say. Just in disbelief. Could you not throw a, a pronoun in there? I, I, I'm just in disbelief. I really... Frankly, that'd be a great name for a guy in a boy band. Justin Disbelief. Justin. My name is Justin. <laughs> Last Justin name, Disbelief. disbelief. <laughs> uh... I can't believe how sexy I am. And I know I'm sure I do this sometimes on Facebook or in text, but I hate when people leave the pronouns out just to shorthand it, just in disbelief. I mean, I get it if you're like trying to reply really quick to someone where you're talking about your dead son. I'm gonna use, a, use a complete sentence. I'm gonna this woman could listen. not write for shit. She also said, life's our lives. You'll be in our lives forever, not our lives. I mean, yeah, really? She, she's stupid. Come on. And then... My uncle so, would use a hamburger erratically, and that's why I... So stop no it, stop eat. it. That's It's not funny. It's annoying. It's funny to me. Come up with a funnier <laughs> shtick. So, okay, so so far, Lacey, oh, sounded sorry. like she was kind of a disturbed girl. She was getting attention a lot for made-up stories her whole life. Then she has this son who's the perfect reason for her to get attention because everyone loves pictures of your kid, right? Well, no, they don't. No, first of all, but no one likes pictures of your, your kid. If your child is sick, like nobody you were saying earlier, see, nobody wants to see your pictures. If your son is sick all the time and in the hospital, then in fact people actually do care. They don't pretend to care. They really do because yeah. most people are empathetic and the idea of a, a chronically sick child is a nightmare. So people so she did get a lot of attention, she got a lot of attention. So she th- so anyway, so she went to trial, and she was eventually, um, she was charged with second degree murder and first degree manslaughter. Um, what state? This was in New York. I mean, how do you, okay. I, Chestnut Ridge, New York. Charged with murder. She had only moved to Chestnut Ridge 14 months before he died, by the way. Okay. So, anyways, on March second, two thousand fifteen. So, kind of spent, wait, no joke, but like if, only if, like if, a year after if, he died. If you're going to give somebody enough salt to kill them, I mean, is it through a saline solution or how are you doing this? I don't know, but if you have I mean, a fe- well, okay, I mean, okay, as somebody who is, I've I've worked with kids who had 
feed, feeding bags and oh, the, feeding oh, tubes. Oh, the feeding bags. Yeah, so I you just, you, I, it's, I mean, you can put anything in that. You put formula in it. You put whatever in it. You could totally dump. You could grab a handful of salt packets from McDonald's, dump them into the feeding bag, and you've poisoned someone. It's incredibly easy to do. The problem is, is it shows up, and she did it to such an extreme that it was like the doctor said, there was no way this could have been just a case of, you know, severe dehydration or anything. Um, so like a on, meal so he died. So he died in January, 2014 on, on, did I say 2015 earlier? I meant he, it was in 2014, but in, on, in 2015, March, she was convicted, um, of, killing her son by poisoning him with table salt, which she had administered him, to him from infancy through his feeding tube. So she'd been poisoning him for years. This was the cause of many, many, many of his issues. So she, this was a case probably of Munchausen syndrome by proxy, which is but why a phenomenon that how- fucking, it's fascinating. They actually didn't use that term in the trial because what, I guess. fucking it, fascinating? No, well, maybe they did. They, they might have yeah. used that one. But they didn't use Munchausen syndrome by proxy. I doubt they had dirty pirate hooker mouths like you then. Probably not. That probably doesn't go over well in court, does it? No. You Unless you're quoting someone. I'd love someone. to see you in court as a prosecutor. God, no, you don't. You fucking asshole. That'd be your You know what, line. though? Here's the thing. I'm very cool. In a professional setting, I'm very cool and cl- calm and collected. It's, I, I can control my pr- you know, profanities. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure it'd be great in court. It'd be fine. You I would, would be. never swear. It'd be fantastic. So she, so, but Munchausen's by proxy has, is always fascinating because it's like, so it's sort it's, I mean, it's sort of a controversial, like people say like, is that even a thing? But it, it, it seems like it is. So the, what the phenomenon is, is that somebody sickens someone who is in their care for the purpose of getting attention and sympathy. And so she may not have even, she probably wasn't, maybe she was, but she probably wasn't actually trying to kill him. She was just trying to keep him sick. Because she wanted, she liked the attention that she got for being this, this, this image of this caretaking, hey. long suffering. She wasn't thinking mother. It's like just add salt. You you go to a restaurant, it's better because there's more salt. We were talking about the you, fact you that you put more salt in the home kid, cooks under salt kid. their food. Yeah, she did not yeah. under salt. So maybe yeah, she thought yeah. his formula that she was putting in his feeding bag just need a little seasoning. The police went there and she made a meal. And they're like, hey, can we have some salt. They're like, I'm all out. I'm all. Out. And, that, and that's that's when they started. <laughs> Like, hmm, this is odd. So, it's interesting because they slip in her the driveway. maximum sentence. It was icy. So the ma- no Would salt. you like to hear about the sentencing? A little bit, I guess. So yeah. the interesting thing is, they they actually never mentioned Munchausen by proxy that phrase in the trial, but they said that she appeared to have mental illness that was causing her to sicken her son intentionally you know why? for the purpose of getting attention and, and and sympathy for herself. And so the the, the judge. Um, did not sentence her to the maximum, which was 25 years to life, um, but instead just only sentenced to, to her to a mere 20 years to life in prison, well, which I don't really well, get what, what the fuck that... What was she convicted of? Second degree murder, That's what I first degree mans- manslaughter. I don't think Munchausen, um, by don't proxy, are... could, could lead to second degree murder, because second degree murder is more like heat of the moment, passion kind of thing. If you're... That's accidental death. Essentially, if you're arguing Manchosen syndrome, Manchusen, mm, but no, I'm just but it'd be it wasn't clear. So here was what was clear: what was clear is that she poisoned him. What was unclear was whether she was poisoning him intentionally to kill him because she knew that the attention That's, and sympathy that she would garner as a mother who lost a child, if that was the level of attention she was getting, because you have to admit she kind of escalated over the years. So maybe she was escalating to this. You know, she was getting so much attemp- attention and sympathy as mother of a sick kid. And then imagine if her child died. I mean, she would just be a, a, a you know, a figure of sympathy forever. I mean, we just so it was unclear, I think. And I guess the jury decided that there was enough circumstantial evidence to show that she where's possibly the, was the trying to where was it they find it they found it the yeah. neighbor had it and there was salt in it yes that's such not, a high concentration that's the, that, that's the opposite of circumstantial evidence that is actual evidence well yeah but i mean i guess that <laughs> yeah. what they what the circumstantial part is is that whether or not she was trying to kill him i don't know yeah 
No, no, I know. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. I like I said, I just found out about this. This is an impromptu podcaster. But I think you know, there's a. It's interesting. It's really interesting because what's just so interesting is like the psychology behind, you know. Most parents, you love your kids so much, the idea of your kid being sick or having to go to the hospital is terrifying. It's just like, I mean, I'm so neurotic. I'm always worried that someone's going to accidentally get poisoned. And the idea that you would be intentionally poisoning your kids so that you could be constantly taking them to the hospital and getting lots of attention for it is just so fucking crazy. It's just so crazy. Let's go with crazy here. I mean, like... I mean, it's it's a mental illness. Let's she now. So she's banging her downstairs neighbor in an apartment complex. What was his name? Chris Hill. Chris Hill. We'll, we'll get back to that in a little bit. But like, okay. So Chris Hill must have known on some level that his upstairs neighbor was a crazy chick. Well, he even says at one point that they used to, that before he even got to know her, he would call her some. He would kind of make fun of like yeah. he and his friends or something would say yeah. like, there goes the weird you know i don't but know so as, okay okay so finish your thing we're gonna talk no, about no, what were you this. gonna say go ahead no, well, I, the, I'm the big pretty part much done. that's it she's in prison she's of course given incredibly tearful interviews because hey. why wouldn't she and there is no, a facebook chilling. you can you can still look up her blog it's still up her facebook page is down but now there is we'll, a we'll, facebook we'll link to it on our on sure our and there's facebook, also a yeah. facebook page called mothers for and that's the numeral for not for mothers for lacy spears at pray for lacy of course and i'm like who is making this i feel like this page is run somehow by proxy from lacy spears because it's all things like what? Hope Lacey had a good Mother's Day. We all know her poor baby is down in heaven, down in heaven, looking down on her and thinking about how much he misses her. And then and here's another one. What makes the world go round is love, compassion, and understanding, not bliss, no. not blind hate, hatred. Look into your own heart and reassess yourself before you try and judge Lacey. This has got to be her sister or somebody running this. Gravity. And sort of the way. comments are fucking fantastic. Well, Things like, the good news is women in prison don't like child abusers. She'll definitely get what's coming to her. <laughs> I mean, it but, but, but is here's the thing. Amazing. I mean, like, but enough people were following her or liking her that they, 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 I mean, you can get a group of people to do anything. Hopefully, listen to a podcast about murder or make callous jokes about it. But you can make people, I mean, like, it doesn't matter how right or wrong she is, she's going to have supporters here. But let's, let's go back to our public service part here. This is what we do. You need to ask me a question. How, how could we have avoided this whole thing from happening? Well, you know, the thing is, is I think a lot of people thought something was up with her and in fact here's here's who i think probably screwed up somewhere along the line was although she moved a couple times i think how old was i was gonna say some doctor should have picked this up i mean don't they look for this and i think think in fact they said at one point she was reported for neglect or something or abuse or something some suspected thing so i say that the somewhere along the line that child welfare system fucked up. So either the people mm. in the hospital didn't pick up on the fact this kid has a mystery illness. He's been hospitalized probably hundreds of times and he's five and there's no real diagnosis. That should be a huge red flag. And in fact, if, Typically they, is, and if they did report her, which it sounds like they did, at least one person reported her at some point, that investigation didn't, didn't go anywhere. And I don't know how you really look into that. It's hard; it must be hard to look into. But what they probably should have done was done a shitload of, and they did do a shitload of tests on him. They, he, she must have, for a while, just been poisoning him just enough to keep making him mysteriously sick, but not enough for it to get picked up by any kind of well if you, blood if, test or anything as poisoning. Perhaps just why salt is actually kind of brilliant because if you have too much salt. <laughs> Now, remember we were in New York City this summer, and I had those nice little salt stains on my shirt from walking around. Oh, that was we, gross. Yes, it was gross. I'm very gross. But we had lots. There is, we all have salt in our bodies. What I'm we saying. do, and you need a certain amount of salt. And if your salt levels get too low, Actually, that is also not good. And that is why people drink Gatorade when they are working out really hard. Not when you're just working out a normal amount, but if you're like doing a triathlon, then you can have Gatorade. Not if you're just going to soccer practice. You don't really need Gatorade. Okay, okay, but, okay. yeah, you, need to, you yeah. need to re- replace your sodium at some point because if your sodium levels are too low. Yeah, so you have to have a, a certain a fairly amount way to poison someone, of then. sodium in your blood. Yeah. You poison them with a natural substance. So if she was giving him... I ex- call that killing with kindness. <laughs> if, you, 
Yeah, if she was giving him just enough extra salt all the time that it was making him sick, but you already have salt in your body, it was pretty fucking hard to detect, I imagine. So, so I don't know so, how you so would... Garrett, Garrett but was, the weird thing is, the thing is, is all these people saw that she was making shit up. She wasn't that fucking clever. She invented the father of her child, invented some guy, and then like her... Yeah. Facebook friends of hers were like, uh, that's complete bullshit because we've never even seen this guy. But she made new friends. Garrett was, she did make new Garrett friends. Garrett was fucked from birth. Garrett couldn't do anything different. He was five mm-hmm. when he died. What was the guy's name downstairs again? Chris Hill. He sounds Good. like he was kind of a loser. He, well, let me, let me just, this is entirely Chris Hill's fault. You know, Chris <laughs> could have avoided this. Look, I, I know we know each other well, but like, this, guys know. Guys know when they need to pull out and not finish inside a woman. They can sense hey, the cl- knowing Lacey, though, isn't she the the kind of woman who would have, like, punched a hole in a condom? Yeah. And that's so, why you pull out. Look, Laura. <laughs> or said, like, have, I'm on birth control pills. Yes. Because and, yes, and these are most all, women don't do that, but this is the kind of woman that no, would have. No, I think plenty of women do that. And I know I, I deal with a lot of people who have had these unplanned pregnancies at young ages, but, like, some of the guys, I mean, like, the guy needs to, if you're with a woman who's, you can just, I, you can feel the crazy coming off of yeah. them. I mean, even they say maybe I'm he on did pill, pull out. Maybe this. she like scooped up that's, a little something. Oh God, and, it's a nightmare. I mean, like yeah. I don't want to get too graphic on this, but this woman was nuts, and she probably does that work? Like you can go back in the trash can and put it kind of inside of you, and that'll. I think if it's fast enough, it would. You used to joke about that back in the day. I think if yeah. it's, I think if it's within a matter of an yeah. hour or something, probably it probably would work just fine. I can get things pregnant just by looking at them though. So it's just, Oh my on. God. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, she, she, pro- I, but, but here's the thing though. They are young. They were young. They were in their early twenties. So here's this. So now think of yourself as Crystal, not to, I mean, not to let him totally off the hook, but here's this guy. He, he, he's having sex with his neighbor a few times. She's kind of crazy, but she's kind of cute. And, and then all of a sudden she's like, I'm pregnant. And he's like, Oh fuck. But in, I, I have in been his, in that situation. In but, his, yeah. yeah. Well, so in his side of the story, I, exactly. I'm, I'm not the father of Garrett. So, well, good. Garnet, 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 Garnet was his name. Garnet, yeah. Um, Garrett, in Garnet. his, in he's his, anyways, in so. his version of the story, he says that he wanted to marry her and all this stuff. Who knows if that's true. But anyways, she eventually then did say to him, you're not the father. You're not actually the father. It's actually my ex-boyfriend. He's He's this guy named Blake. No no child support. Right. So this is guys. Back to Halo. Yeah. He's like, exactly. (laughs) In his early twenties, he's like, what's he going to do? Like fight her down, demand a paternity test? No. He's probably like, thank God I dodged a bullet. And he probably convinced himself that it wasn't his. Well, he's probably like, she was crazy. And I knew that. Right. But like, at some point, she's sitting there like, I'm on the pill. Just come inside me, or oh god, or, yeah, who knows? Or yeah, there's no holes in the condom for this guy. It was definitely they were. Who knows? You know, they were young and dumb. I, I'm just saying, I've had radar, but I, I, there, there once was a, a woman that I knew who had told me a very similar phrase, saying, "Do this, and it'll be fine." I'm like, yeah, yes. Yeah, three months later, guys. Three, mo- three months later, she's pregnant. Oh, no man. timeline, cross line there, but I'm like. And she already had a kid. Yeah, well, and, and like, and I, and I felt the crazy coming off of her. Ladies, her don't name was Courtney. Don't try, <laughs> don't try to get pregnant by your downstairs neighbor you don't know that well. And guys, well, you have me thinking too. If you're in an apartment complex and your upstairs neighbor is, is fucking you, that's just a bad. I mean, like, that's a bad situation. And he says, like, crazy. they still lived in the same apartment complex because he would see her with the baby, try to catch a glimpse of the baby, try to see if it looked like him or whatever. But anyways, he <laughs> did, He never saw the kid. He never ever saw him. And but he he did somehow hear about this kid when like um news the newspapers kind of picked up on this story because she had, you know was this big, I mean local newspapers and um. Blake. Before she was charged, and then I think when she was charged, definitely there were lots of stories. And this guy at that point reached out and Facebook messaged her, like, "Hey," because he said he always kind of suspected this probably was his kid. And that's the point where she was like, "Yeah, our son." So, I mean, yeah, he he could, but what what really could he have done? Because she was denying it was his. She moved away with the baby. She wouldn't let him near her. She threatened to call the police if he came near her. I mean, she just sounds like an asshole. I mean, she she killed a kid. She does sound like it. She is an asshole. She's a terrible person. She killed her kid for attention. I mean, and there's got to be some... They've got to have a lack of empathy there, right? There's got to be some kind of psychopathy behind 
Munchausen's by proxy because well, it means you're not actually empathetic to the person that you're hurting, right? Or, or the, just or, a fucking at, attention at the very, whore. At the very attention whore, at the very least, you think that you're not really going to hurt them; they're going to get better. But like, she clearly, she there is no catharsis here where she came forward and confessed, right? No, She's she that, denies it to, to this day, day. And, and she'll she, deny it forever. Yep, and she has the tearful interviews denying it because, of course, what's more attention seeking than being a poor? Innocent mother imprisoned for the... Everybody's innocent in prison. Yeah. They're all fucking guilty. Okay. Not that one guy we were reading about who's like... Well, probably, <laughs> Did yeah, you I read know. that one? Oh, God. Okay. This, no, but this... let's, let's put... Yeah, let's... Uh, I'm just trying to... But, but, but they had here... a gag order on him because he kept writing letters to ju- to, to the journalists because telling about all the <laughs> yeah, murders he'd committed. <laughs> let's do that one down the road. That, all right. That's anyway, fantastic. Yes. No, but, I mean, Lacey is the opposite of that guy. Okay, but here's how you avoid this. Deny, I, deny, I guess deny. if you work in the hospital and you, see, you have a weird illness... Keep calling social services. I know people that work as social workers. And actually, I know a really nice person who's, they call it failure to thrive, whose own child um, was met, wasn't was breastfeeding, wasn't eating. And she basically had got herself called on because, you yeah. know, it wasn't thriving. But I think, I was just thinking that with the feeding tube and the feed bag, that circumvents all that failure to thrive stuff too, yes. which, which, which is like a big red flag. And with the ironic thing, and I can't name this person's name, but... This person specialized in Munchausen syndrome, and she was one of the first people in Michigan to bring forward. Interesting. She got a master's degree in it, and she wow. brought. And she actually, uh, don't I? I'm not gonna. Yeah, I don't think. We, well, we're recording this now, so I can't. I can't weigh in. But you tell me later, but they would definitely have an opinion on this whole thing. Oh, so yeah, wow. but, but I'm, I'm saying, and but they they actually I actually worked on one. Uh, I can't do that, but so anyway. Anyways, edit, edit, edit. So. Here's how we avoid. But yeah, this. here's so here's the thing, and I'm a I'm a mandated reporter because I work in a school, and you can't, here's the thing is that if you have any inkling that there's anything weird, go ahead and call Child Protective Services because the you know the the worst case scenario is you there isn't anything going on that parent's going to be stressed and irritated that Child Protective Services was called on them, but the best case scenario is is that you get them investigated for something that's actually happening and you, and you protect that kid. So but this, I think... But this is science, though. I mean, this needs, like, a doctor. I mean, ch- child... CPS is not going to figure out well, a toxicology but that's report. that's what you have... Like, if, the, if all you have to go on is that you think this kid's mysterious illnesses are weird, you've got to call CPS. You can't call the... Maybe you can call the police, well, can you? The They'll prob- probably just the refer is, it right back to CPS doctor, if there isn't doctors anything. Doctors think differently than lawyers and police, but here's how you would have solved this on a, on a TV show if you were a hero doctor. Mm-hmm. You would have demanded that the child be isolated from the mother, the yeah, other that, caregiver, that's for six and months. And then watch him get better and better and better yeah, and not get sick as again. way, because you look at the probability of, if it's mm-hmm. a mysterious illness right. that can't be diagnosed, you, it's razor's theory. But in real you, life, you, you can't do that. You fucking can do that. But you How? You, you call and see, if CPS said the only possibility here, it's a mysterious illness that no one's ever documented before, or the sole caregiver is, is, is sabotaging this. We'll put the child in an isolated environment where the caregiver can visit them, but they don't have any access to providing the medical treatment, that sort of thing. We're going to monitor their progress for a three-month period. Yeah, I mean, like, couldn't they have, like, if they had, if a doctor had really felt strongly and called the police, could the police have not got a search warrant at that point to check his feeding bags? Because it doesn't sound like they ever... Easily. Or, or something. But the thing is, I'm wondering, because for a long time she was poisoning him, but not enough... That, that it would have been impossible to catch because the amount of sodium would not have been above what right. your body could just normally have if you're dehydrated. It's a, it's a fairly ingenious you way. You have a metabolic disorder. It is a pretty ingenious she's way heard, to poison someone. She probably someone. read or heard something class and and just hit a nerve and she realized she could do that. I mean, what person in the population has access to that kind of information and the desire to poison their own child? I mean, it, it's a minuscule percentage. So it's, it's a pretty freakish occurrence. It's just amazing because I think that this is just completely my own I'm just totally talking out of my ass because I don't really know but I think that it seems like the people who have Munchausen's by proxy they're not like diabolically rubbing their hands together like I'm going to poison it they've somehow convinced themselves that they aren't harming like you know what I mean I don't think that they are uh, the split personality where they're really evil and, and, and getting off on hurting the kid I think that they are just so desperately attention seeking that they're kind of just doing this but they actually don't feel like that. You know what I mean? I, I'm not really articulating it well, but it's a really weird. God, I wish I kind of wish I'd been a psych, a psych major because it's also I know you're rolling your eyes. I mean, like everyone's a psych major. I know, but it's interesting, right? Is, not really. 
Well, it's interesting whatever. to me. People like you know what I really wish I had been? It was a was a neurologist. Yeah, me too. We'd be because so fucking rich. Brains <laughs> are where it's at. This fucking interesting yeah, I mean, like, as hell. Psychology is like racism. Sex. It's 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 all about you. I mean, you, anything that directs the back to your own thoughts and minds, like. How many freshman psych majors were there that would diagnose people in the dorms with like various disorders or things? I'm like not. That? I'm not even a freshman psych major, and I'm diagnosing everyone I know. You are. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, and I know the diagnosis. I is. diagnose everyone with everything. I mean, I'm like, oh, that guy, yeah, borderline personality. Oh, he's a narcissist. I mean, it's interesting, but yeah, it really is almost like it's like astrological signs or something. It's like. Well, these are just labels. There's no blood test for these psych- psychological problems. But it's really all got to come down to brains, right? Well, There's got to be something fucked up in the wiring. It does. And now I see my bourbon's out. So let's get to the part of the show where I'm just going to summarize how to avoid this murder. Do this it. Death, and I'm going to say, pull out when you're banging a crazy girl. And if you're <laughs> and doctors, doctors think like lawyers a little oh, bit. You gotta, you gotta think, like a, think like a cop. I mean, you got to yeah. stay frosty. Doc. Okay, doctors, stay frosty. Guys... Pull out if they're crazy. Yeah, those I mean, sound like good, I, concise pieces of like, like I would if, advice. If, if you're banging a medical student or someone who's got a great job, yeah, let it fly. Just, but I mean, your upstairs neighbor man, what is going to happen there? Just pull out, aim for the mouth, do something. But there's just you can do it. I know it's it's tempting not to, but just pull out. All could be avoided. Now, are, yeah, <laughs> easy advice to take. Well. Just, hey. Okay. So, that being said, it's my turn to tell a story about a time I should have been killed or almost killed. Yes. And I, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm probably going to exaggerate a little bit, but like, I was in Chicago, um, and I got invited out to a bar that was in a very shady area of town with a friend who had, who was a lawyer, who had a client that liked to go there and they had won some case, that sort of thing. So, I, and, and she was a woman. So, I, I go out there and, the the drinks were cheap. It was like in the southwest side of the city, and I go in there, and it's uh, it's like me, her, the bartenders, like some dude with a beard, way too old to be, be a bartender, <laughs> and the crowd is like, it's not like no one's going there to get laid kind of bar. Like people are just there because it's third shift or they're playing pull tabs. They're this hard. Is in Chicago. It's hard fucking core. They're going there to, there to drink. But I was poor, and it was cheap drinks, right. and that that was that was the attraction. And they had like they had food and like. Dollar fifty beers, and this is like cheap in Chicago. I don't. And she worked at a clinic. We were both in law school at the time, so we go there. I mean, it was just how I, I forget when it was, but um, <laughs> we go there, and at some point we're sitting at a table, and people are coming and talking to us, and I, I'm sitting at a table, and there's like four people at the table, all men, and she leaves, and they're all looking at me, and they're like, "So you're a lawyer?" Huh? I'm like, "No, I'm not." So you do this? No. And one guy, and then they start talking to each other in some foreign language. I, 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 in my mind, I believe it was like Russian, but I'm sure it was Spanish. Because I was getting kind of hammered there. And they're all surrounding me, getting closer and closer, talking. They're asking about money. Hey, can you pay our tab? You can do this, you can do that. Ooh. And I'm like, oh, the fuck is my friend? And then she's playing darts with some dude who she went home with later that night. It was really, that was really annoying, too, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> truly a friend. Oh, friend zoned again. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't believe in friend. It wasn't a friend zone kind of thing. But, yeah, it, it was a cheap drink kind of thing. This is gotcha. A, yeah. Um, I, I went to the, well, God, I went to the man, bar called the Manhole one time in Chicago because a person at the law school with knew the bartender there. It was mm-hmm. Gayest of all gay bars. It's a different story, but like free drinks. All I had to do was watch male porn for a few hours. It was fantastic. The free drinks, not the. Uh, maybe I have a drinking problem. I don't know. But the. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, I'm here. So, my friend's off playing darts. I, I, I got four guys at the table who are all speaking their own little moon man language, and they're getting closer and closer. And then, uh, so I, I just, you know, I'm like. I'm like, I feel like it was a scene in Training Day where, like, oh, the guys at the yeah. table, they're all, like, a clear... God, that was a great movie. Yeah, clearly it's not that dangerous, but, like, so I, I sit there, I just lean back, and I'm like, guys, guys, you want to hear a joke? I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Because they're all asking me to pay their tab. I'm like, all right, how do you get an unpregnant? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, you fuck her! And then I stand up, and I walk to the bar, and look back. And I, I, I didn't know if anything was going to happen to me. They probably just said that guy left, but... <laughs> In my mind, I was, that was like, a good one. I, I was like, really that's pretty scared. badass. That's pretty badass. Was it? Yeah, I was, yeah. Really, I was really scared for a second there, and uh, yep. And then I, you, uh, I held a cab, threw him off. off, and you walked out the door. That was a smart move. Yeah, but throw in something unexpected and get the fuck out. I said, "Hey, I'm out of here." To my friend who's playing darts, and it's like, "Okay." 
<laughs> no, I got home. I might get drunk. Hey, uh, maybe I drove down there. Who the fuck knows? It was my third well, year of okay. law school. Don't drink and drive, guys. Unless you're in Chicago. They don't, well, yeah, I don't do that either. Okay, <laughs> so that's my little story for tonight. <laughs> um, I that's I had kind of thought of that ahead of time. I, I, I have lots of stories. You do. I you do. have lots of almost murdered stories. It's yeah. amazing you're still sitting here alive. Yeah, I say we, you, you can get other people's stories if you want them to. But, um, all right, so that's that's the show for tonight or this week. Um, Lacey Peterson? No, that was a different Lacey. <laughs> Lacey Spears. Lacey Spears. No relation to Brittany. All right, so until then, guys, pull out, be, stay frosty, and stay safe. Good night. Love you. Thank you once again for listening to How to Avoid Murder and Other Awkward Situations. If you're listening to this, that means you haven't been murdered, and we've done our job. Make sure you check us out on Facebook at How to Avoid Murder, or online on the World Wide Web at avoidmurder.com. And until next time, stay safe.